This is Graham Atwell for Links Up Project. Do you think e-learning to uh, learning 2.0? I'm sorry, supporting is does it support inclusive lifelong learning? I think it's interesting that uh, when we started this interview, you started saying e-learning 2.0, because of course, really we should be talking about learning 2.0, not e-learning 2.0. And of course, the 2.0s we've taken from a computer analogy of the move from the web 1.0, which was a push media, to web 2.0, which was a, a media where people could contribute themselves, could publish themselves, could express themselves, and were an active part in forming the web rather than just consuming. So if we're talking about something that could be learning 2.0, I guess we'd be talking away from the uh, a pedagogic approach where we mean that we're, we're basically we're filling kids' heads with information to a pedagogic approach where kids themselves are exploring ideas, exploring knowledge and critically sharing knowledge between each other, a co-teaching, breaking down the divide of who is the teacher, who is the learner, moving away from experts to co-created or, or what Dave Cormier has called reasonmatic knowledge. And of course that does support inclusion, not in bringing a new form of educational institutions which allow people to come in, but putting forward the idea that you can learn outside, outside institutions, that learning is based within society, or what many years ago now Ivan Illich called de-schooling society. And by de-schooling society, he didn't mean we didn't need learning, he meant we need more learning, and that learning is through society. So in that way, yes. Um, we, ha we are running a lot of experiments also in this project, but it's all around Europe. And um, a big question also related to learning 2.0 is whether isolated experiments can be mainstreamed, especially in Europe? I think this is, I mean, it's a difficult question, isn't it? We've had a lot of experience of projects which haven't been mainstreamed, especially funded projects which fail on the end of the project funding. That's the first issue. And we've got a whole series of excellent practices, and I don't know if I call them experiments, but I'd call them islands of innovative and exemplary practice within education, which has failed to be mainstreamed. Now, this isn't a simple answer. It's not that we can find a new algorithm or find a single measure which allows that exemplary practice to become part of the mainstream. I mean, I'd see it as a more organic form of how we exchange knowledge, how we exchange practices, and it raises a whole lot of political issues. One thing is to say, if we can just get a portal of innovative practice together, and then the policy makers will go there, and they find it, and they impose that top down on all the education. No, that's not going to work. We need more ways of organic exchange and understandings of practice, one of the best examples I've actually seen of that happening was a UK JISC funded project, and I can't remember the name of it, but all they did is they took people from one institution to look at practice in the classroom, in the teaching and learning practice in another institution. And the very last thing I'll say on it, I still think some of the best practice in inclusive education, in innovative education I've seen, is in primary schools. And I love really rich learning environments in primary schools using group learning, using all kinds of tactile resources which seem to be careless and left lying around. One thing I'd love to do is to bring teachers together from different sectors and to look at their practices and consider what the difference is uh, on what they can do to start sharing between practice. So I think it's a ground up movement that we need if that mainstreaming is going to take place. Well, the last question is actually related to this one, actually really fills the gap between your answer and my question is, um, do you think learning 2.0 is or can fundamentally change educational landscapes? 
let's say first of all learning 2.0 is like everything a construct of course it is it's yeah. not a precise thing but if you're talking about the changing ways in which people are using primarily using technologies but changing ways in which people are learning using all kinds of different resources if you're talking about the way in which people are contacting each other, learning from each other, sharing what they've learned, putting up videos, hacking, and I think the movement towards hacking, hacking is a brilliant word, the way kids are learning from hacking into systems. It's not a matter of can it change, it is already changing, and the task for education is to consider what education systems, what institutions are going to do in response to the way young people are not just young people are already learning, already using technologies for learning in the real world. So it's not a question of it's going to change, it's what are you going to do about the way it is changing. Memory.